All over the world are rivers falling from mountains, rushing through tight valleys or peacefully flowing through the flat plains. Every river on the world, however, has an end. This can be in any low-lying place, but is mostly an ocean or a sea. The way a river flows out into the ocean is never the same. Currents, sediments and humans often influence the river in its path to the ocean. Sediments can create huge deltas, whereas currents can push back the river significantly into the hinterland. This creates a huge diversity of estuaries or deltas. In this video you will learn all ins and outs about estuaries and deltas. How are they formed, how do you recognize them and how do they influence their surroundings. When a river ends up in the sea, it has already traveled a long way. The huge meandering river you see in the floodplains once was a little stream making its way down a mountain. Slowly the river carved a path through the landscape, creating gorges, cliffs and valleys. The rocks and boulders that once laid where the river now flows are gone, but they haven't disappeared. Slowly the river has eroded them away, leaving nothing but a stony riverbed. As the river flows towards the ocean, more debris is gathered due to erosion. When the river slows down close to the sea, all debris is dropped. Stones have now turned to sand and clay. This process, called sedimentation, is one of the most important processes that determine the shape of the river's mouth. Together with the sea current and the tidal difference, an estuary or delta can be formed. As you can see in the animation, without current a delta will be formed. All sediments will layer up till a huge delta is formed. When there is a current along the coast or a large tidal difference, an estuary will form. As you can see in the animation, the river is formed in exactly the same way as in the other animation. The only difference is the way it enters the ocean. An estuary is a partially enclosed water body which contains brackish water and is under the influence of the sea. When tidal differences are big, Sediments will be dropped within the river's mouth at high tide, but washed away at low tide. This continuing process creates an intricate pattern of sandbanks and funnels. When sea currents are strong along the coast, sediments will simply be washed away. There are, however, several kinds of estuaries. We will discuss four of them. The first estuary is a tectonic estuary. Such an estuary is formed due to plate tectonics. Most of the time an inland area drops down due to faults or subsidence. And a depression which is formed is filled with a combination of river and seawater, creating an estuary. Plate tectonics can be complicated and therefore tectonic estuaries can be formed in various ways. A well-known example of a tectonic estuary is the San Francisco Bay in the USA. Another type of estuary is a fjord. Fjords are found anywhere where there once was a glacier. Due to the eroding effect of a glacier, a huge U-shaped valley is created. When the glaciers retreated after the last ice age, all that was left behind was a very deep U-valley, which in combination with rising sea levels filled up with water. Because of the very big erosive power of a glacier, fjords can be very deep. Due to sediments pushed forward by glaciers, a wall of sediment is often present near the entrance of the fjord. Most of the time this so-called sail is a shallow part of the fjord. The next estuary is a drowned river mouth. This is a very common type of estuary and forms due to rising sea levels. When sea levels rise, ocean water flows into the river, which creates a long, narrow estuary. The last several millennia, the sea level has been rising, creating a lot of drowned river mouths. The last estuary is a bar-built estuary. This is an estuary formed when sandbars are created when the river meets the sea. The sudden collision of water bodies 
caused the speed of the river to drastically drop. And here the sediment is also dropped, creating a long sandbar with only a small opening to let water out. A good example is the Pamlico Sound in the USA. These types of estuaries are incredibly shallow. The forming of an estuary can also be simulated at home. Grab some sand, pour water over it and wash everything away at your river's mouth. Due to the current you have created, an estuary will form. As you can see in the experiment, an estuary is a partially enclosed water body. A delta, on the other hand, is a protrusion into the ocean or sea. The same experiment without a current will create a delta. From this we can tell that when tides and currents are weak, and the river carries sufficient sediment, a delta can be formed. Sediments drop into the sea due to slow water speeds. Due to this, the sleever gradually rises until it emerges out of the water. A delta is formed and slowly grows further into the ocean. If the currents, however, are too strong, an estuary will be formed instead. Sediments will be transported elsewhere. As a result, a drowned river valley estuary or bar built estuary will be formed. A beautiful example of delta is the delta of the Lena River in Siberia. A delta is often very fertile with a lot of agricultural activities, whereas an estuary is not fertile, but on the other hand, great for fishing. To determine whether a river mouth has become a delta or an estuary, we look at various things. Firstly, we look at whether the currents along the coast are strong or not. As you can see in this chart, speeds can vary significantly. Secondly, we look at the tidal difference in the area. Just as sea currents, the tidal difference can take away sediments deposited by the river, preventing the formation of a delta. In this chart, you can see the differences in tides very clearly. Now we look at the length and surface of the river. Is the river able to carry a lot of sediment or not? And is the surface vulnerable to water erosion? This map shows you the vulnerability of areas around the world. You can use this map to determine whether a lot of sediment is being deposited at your river's mouth. Near the river's delta you should see a lot of sediment. If not, it probably is an estuary. Lastly, we look at the history of our river. Could it be possible that the river's mouth is formed due to plate tectonics or a glacier? If you now look at all your data, you should see a logical explanation to why your river looks the way it does. Now you can tell why your river is a delta or an estuary. An example. Let's look at one of the biggest rivers in the world. The Yangtze River is with 6380 kilometers, the third longest river in the world. When you look at all charts I showed before, there isn't a strong sea current at the Yangtze River mouth. There is, however, a very big tidal difference. This could be a reason why the Yangtze River is an estuary. On the other hand, the length is very long and the river passes through vulnerable terrain. The amount of sediment will therefore be rather high. When we look at the sedimentary map, however, little is deposited right before the Yangtze river mouth. As we can see in the map, most sediment is transported little south of the river mouth. In conclusion, we can say that the Yangtze river is an estuary because of the large tidal difference. All sediment is deposited south of the river mouth due to this tidal difference. Everywhere in the world there are rivers entering the ocean, all form an estuary or delta. Which one is formed depends on various factors. The speed of the sea current, the tidal differences, and the amount of sediment carried. All these factors together determine whether a delta will be formed due to little current and little tidal difference, and a lot of sediment, or an estuary when the current is strong or the tidal difference is big and not too much sediment is carried. 
Hopefully you found this video useful and you understand better how estuaries and deltas are formed.